Hello, this is Clayton with Aeromotive Research and Development Group. Today we're going to talk about a very important topic, electrolysis. The effects upon components and performance for the racing and automotive coolant system. Now, what we want to do, we're going to talk about what electrolysis is in a moment, but what we want to do is we want to prevent electrolysis. You see, we don't want to allow electrical charges or voltage creating from salts, minerals, and acids within the water held within the coolant system to take place and hold it like a battery. It's also called electrolysis and all the damage that it can occur. Now a couple of points we want to get to which is very important. Number one, when I say, well I just use regular tap water. Well you see tap or filtered or pure water, all right, uh, you know filtered water, naturally contains salts and minerals which become acidic. You see, natural tap or pure drinking water, no matter the level of purification and filtration processes, has trace amounts of salts and minerals within the water. Okay? And at 130 to 140 degrees, these salts and minerals release from the water. Now, distilled water is 100% pure. It does not contain salts and minerals, which can create an acidic environment. You see, tap or filtered water, no matter how clean it looks or tastes, has microparticles invisible to the human eye, which are the salts, minerals, and contaminants that fall out at 130 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Distilled water through the evaporation condensation process is 100% clean and does not contain salts and minerals. Remember that. Now, here's a quote from the U, uh, U.S. Department of Energy. Electricity is the flow of charges or voltage. See, water with salts, like seawater, is a good conductor of electricity. So here's the problem. Many salts and minerals are already dissolved in water. In the presence of these salts and minerals, which allow water to conduct electricity, when salts dissolve in water, they form uh, uh, separate ions, which is sodium and chloride, which is salt. See, salt ions of sodium and chloride carry an electric charge. See, in cool water, salt stayed dissolved. But at 130 to 140 degrees, these salts and minerals are released. The solution is perfect pure water, which is distilled, without salts and minerals impurity, so that it will not conduct electricity. Let's talk about the definition of electrolysis. You see, the word electrolysis literally means to break something apart, in this case water, using electricity. You see, electro electrolysis of water is the decomposition of water, which is H2O, into oxygen, all right? And uh, which allows electric current to be passed through the water. This process by which we generate uh, hydrogen and oxygen from the water is called electrolysis. The word lysis means to dissolve or break apart. In other words, in summary, electrolysis occurs when coolant becomes acidic. That's from the salts and minerals. So the acidic condition and the salts and minerals break the water down. This acidic condition causes coolant to carry voltage and electric charge. Once the voltage process begins in the coolant, in other words, voltage and electricity is held in the coolant, it will never disperse. When voltage is in the coolant is discovered, it has to be replaced. All the coolant has to be drained out and replaced. Electrolysis occurs when the coolant becomes acidic. In other words, the salts and minerals creates the acidic, acidic environment which increases voltage conductivity. The acidic condition, like a corrosive battery acid, causes the coolant to carry an electric charge. Electricity within the coolant comes from a couple of sources. Number one, a static electricity created from the water, which is friction against two dissimilar metal surfaces. In other words, like aluminum and steel or copper or whatever. Another area is today's modern uh, automotive and race engines with computer sensors and fuel injection is a complicated electrical environment. Modern engines are used as the ground 
for the engine's electrical system, forcing electrical voltage to flow through the block. All right? Unless prevented with the use of a coolant, uh, quality coolant chemistry, these salts and minerals within the water or coolant will capture voltage, sometimes 1 to 3%. You might say, Clayton, well, it's a race engine. Who cares? Well, you must understand the average automotive engine is going to run between 2,000 and uh, 2,500 RPMs. A race engine is going to be operating at anywhere from 7,500 to uh, uh, 10,000 RPMs, depending upon the engine specification. So the process is multiplied two to four times that of the regular engine. Now, when you have the same coolant in your race engine, if it's able to last for an entire uh, season or whatever, or whatever your determination is in racing, it's in there a long time. So the process is multiplied, and we have to look out for that. This is one of our main goals, the prevention and protection from the process of electrolysis. You see, standard water, even highly filtered, will release the salts that are contained, which will eventually conduct electricity. Now, the electrolysis creates an acidic environment like a battery acid. Then the coolant breaks down along with acidic decomposition of the components and the materials and the metals, which then creates rust and everything else. In the end, it lowers the heat transfer capability. All right. So not only are you going to have electricity flowing within the coolant system, but it's going to lower the capability of the heat transfer. Our goal is to keep the highest heat transfer performance as possible. So with the pictures that we have here, what we don't want is the electricity in the coolant system to be able to, per, uh, and, and radiator to affect the performance of our cylinder head and our engine uh, conducting its duties. Now the answer for electrolysis prevention as shared previously within the presentation is number one, start with pure water, commercial distilled, neutral balance with the salts and minerals removed. Why? If you don't have the salts and minerals you won't create an acidic condition which is like a battery acid that will create uh, electrolysis you just stop it before it starts. So that's step number one. Number two, you have to use a qualified coolant system treatment that will help prevent electrolysis by providing acidic control uh, to help reduce the corrosive process within the coolant system. In other words, the uh, coolant system treatment needs to contain uh, an advanced uh, acidic stabilizer or neutralizer and uh, which is chemical technology required for a consistent pH balance. Furthermore, a coolant system treatment needs to have the ability to coat and protect the metal surfaces. In other words, help prevent rust, corrosion, and the acidic environment, which helps prevent the electrical voltage charge process from occurring. Now, we're going to continue the discussion in greater detail on the effects of within our all-weather maintenance uh, on components and performance. So if you want to look at some pictures and really good things, what happens when it goes out of whack, you'll be able to see it there. Now, a qualified coolant system treatment is the water cooler product from Sinmax. Uh, you don't have to double treat. Uh, one pr bottle is it good for 16 uh, ounces. Uh, which is able to trade two to three gallons of distilled pure water and it will provide the thermal performance repeatability it will help with the acidic control it will help coat and protect the metal surfaces as we shared before and I said well what is really the results of, of using a qualified treatment well we'll show it here is a picture you might have seen it in another presentation and this is a short track radiator it was used with a, a Chevy steel block uh, aluminum radiator, other, other aluminum components with over 2,000 racing miles in it. And the radiator after uh, 2,000 miles was like 95% new. Okay, and the coolant metal surfaces within the engine and the radiator was like new. You might say, well, Clayton, how did you get this radiator? Well, it was the 
championship race at the end of the year and there was an accident so it got donated to the cause but this is what it looks like the only thing that's going to hurt this radiator is a wall at 100 miles an hour now in a more higher performance situation here we've got a uh, radiator made by PWR for Delara this is a few years ago it has over 5,000 racing miles with a V6 turbo uh, Indy program and uh, this is the results of using the Synmix water cooler with three gallons of distilled water and uh, the radiator was clean light new now the only reason this radiator was was replaced because it was the end of the year and under technical directive they always wanted to start the new year with a fresh radiator now what's most important in a little greater detail is that the water cooler product is amazing what it's able to perform with multiple years of historic success in other words, it will provide thermal system performance repeatability. All right, uh, uh, you're going to have the cylinder heads and combustion chamber temperatures controlled. It will help control the situations of the acidic uh, problems, which we mentioned. Furthermore, this is why our directive is to be able to use the uh, distilled water uh, to prevent the salts and minerals from getting into the coolant system. Now, if you don't want to go through the process of trying to find a technical grade, uh, distilled water, what we can do is just purchase the uh, Synmax Premix. All right, it's a racing coolant product. This is not an antifreeze, we'll get into that in a minute. It's simple and easy to use, guarantee quality each time, and it has the required 5% FIA treat rate, which is uh, d uh, along with a 95% technical grade distilled water. You might say, Well, what's an FIA treat rate? Well, what that means is the FIA is the international body for like Le Mans and Formula One in Europe, and many of the general rules of competition or sporting regulations that are used in Europe are also translated over to the United States for like NASCAR, IndyCar, ARCA, SCCA, etc. It is a general rule that's followed. No glycols. You're allowed to have a chemistry product that is able to work well for rust and corrosion protection. So well, who uses this? Well, since 2012, the V6 Turbo Indy Car Engine Manufacturer provided a specific technical uh, directive for the use of the water cooler system treatment. Okay, And uh, it's used from the uh, dyno session to the technical sessions to the race session and all the way back through. All right, When used as directive, there was never any coolant system failures. Uh, always cleanliness within the engine, easier to rebuild because the coolant passages were cleaner and the radiator was always working at premium condition. Now, as mentioned before, what about uh, a radiator product? Well, in the uh, V6 turbo program uh, with this engine manufacturer, they used a product from Aeromotive Coolant and it was a bio-based high-performance product which was able to, uh, during the winter testing conditions and winter performance conditions, it was able to work well. Now this extreme duty formula, which is uh, a very, very well, has the ability to go to 300 degrees anti-boil and pressurized, antifreeze down to uh, 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, does not contain, contain any petroleum glycols and has all the performance characteristics of the racing Synmax product, but it's designed for long-term antifreeze requirements. Now, uh, if you're looking for the antifreeze situation, uh, it's developed in the racing with proven durability, designed for the military, marine, and commercial, automotive, gasoline, or diesel, uh, extreme duty, long life applications. So think about it if you need something like that. This is the end of our presentation for the electrolysis and the effects upon components and performance. So we want to thank you for being with us today. As Wayne Lunzing says, the racing radiator, cleanliness, and coolant system performance will equal championship results. So on behalf of Wayne Lunzing, Danning Lunzing, Performance Parts Supply, Left-Hander Chassis Group, including the Synmax uh, Racing Oil Program and, and Product Program, we want to thank you for the time that we have today. Should you desire to purchase the product, Give us a call at in the Chicagoland area at 815-389-9999. Contact us at www.synmaxoil.com. And if you have any technical questions on this or other presentations, please contact us at office at aeromotiveresearch.com. Thank you very much, uh, and we look forward to seeing you at our next presentation.